Hello, my name is Zach Brim. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Florida IFAS, Department of Agronomy, working from the Tropical Research and Education Center. My focus is research and extension in agroecology. In previous segments, I introduced the basic principles and goals of agroecology and described the agroecosystem concept. Much of that perspective is driven by an integration of the practical needs of agriculture and the conceptual framework of ecology. In this segment, I describe some key concepts in agroecology drawn from ecological theory, a bit more about ecological communities, some ways ecosystems function, and the role of disturbance and succession in agroecosystem dynamics. This is a cartoon of an agroecosystem. Within the agroecosystem is a community of plants. Just to simplify, let's focus on the plants on this left hand. In the area on the left-hand side of the cartoon, I count five plants. Plant number one is a mango tree. Number two is a shrub out in the grassy area. The grass is number three. Number four is this ground cover underneath the mango tree. And number five, we'll call a bromeliad. Ecological communities are described by species diversity and interaction. There are five plants in this community. If we are seeking to understand the status of these plants in the community, we might take a snapshot of the community composition by generating a graphic called the Species Abundance Distribution. A Species Abundance Distribution shows the species in a community by rank order, most common to least. This is a common assessment tool in community ecology. The species listed on the x-axis match the species number from the image on the left. The most abundant species is the grass. For simple illustration of this concept, there are 100 individuals of that grass represented on the figure. The next most abundant is this ground cover underneath the canopy, number four, with 70 individuals. You might consider the grass and ground cover common species. Each of the others are somewhat rare. This is a regular pattern observed in ecological communities, a few species that are very common and many species that are very rare. Remember, ecological communities also include the invertebrates and vertebrates. Insects, mammals, birds, and fish are depicted here as individuals. Understanding these communities is also important, especially at the ecosystem level, where the interaction of ecological communities can impact the ecosystem processes. Ecosystem processes describe the flow and dynamics of resources and individuals. Ecosystem processes function within a single community or across multiple communities and trophic levels, as they are called when energy transfers from one community to another. Energy flow and transformation is a key ecosystem process that can determine the currency of life in ecosystems. Other ecosystem processes include dispersal and migration, pollination, herbivory, and decomposition. From an agroecology perspective, we might ask, where are nutrients coming from for the agricultural system? Is decomposition happening at a rate that could assist regeneration of plant nutrients? How are the plants being pollinated? How are the weedy plants being dispersed across the landscape? A pair of integrated concepts key for ecology is disturbance and succession. Disturbance is a key driver of environmental and ecological changes in an ecosystem. Succession is the gradual progression of ecological communities and associated environmental changes. Some successional communities can be stable if they maintain a consistent status over a long period of time and resist disturbance and further progression. Imagine that the healthy agroecosystem, now in the top left corner, has been highly disturbed and modified for the purposes of agriculture. One of the greatest ecological disturbances for agriculture is the chainsaw or the plow. With such intense disturbance, the canopy cover has been removed. The water body has dried up. Maybe we can imagine a dam upstream or irrigation from the agriculture has taken up all the water. The previous agroecosystem, perhaps healthier by the metric of plant diversity, has been modified for production. But perhaps in the transformation of the land, something of the whole ecosystem functioning has also been lost. Resilience, a foundational principle of agroecology, can be considered for various facets of the agroecosystem. With the land transformation to agriculture, productivity of a single or small selection of crops has been chosen against the stability of the whole agroecosystem. A major environmental disturbance, like flooding rains or high winds, might destroy the single crop of interest. 
whereas the agroecosystem with greater plant diversity may be able to take up flooding waters or include barriers for high wind and rebound in the face of disturbance. This rebound is the key attribute of a resilient agroecosystem. You can think of disturbance as a push to the agroecosystem to an earlier successional state. Early successional ecosystems are often highly disturbed and populated by colonizers. Early plant colonizers are often considered weeds in agriculture. Lacking disturbance, succession progresses towards slower migrating and longer living plants. In agriculture, that might look more like polyculture, perennial agriculture, or agroforestry. We can understand the dynamics of disturbance and succession using the rank abundance distribution. The distribution on the left is the same as before with a few common species. The species abundance distribution for the early succession has one very common introduced plant, like wheat. A second moderately common plant may be another crop plant. Everything else, including the native plants, is exceedingly rare. There is a shift in the identity of the plants present. All of the mango trees in the late successional ecosystem have been removed. There is more disparity in plant abundance in the highly managed and manipulated system. The other system has a less uneven distribution of plants. This is an example of how to use ecological theory to understand the health and community processes of an agroecosystem. Maybe this is the intermediate state where there is intensified agriculture in the background but it's also interacting with these other managed systems. There are grazers in the system and pollinators. There are mango trees and birds. Perhaps this intermediate state represents an ideal agroecosystem dynamic because the biodiversity facilitates ecosystem functioning in a healthy way. There is then the opportunity to maintain the sustainable production of food along with healthy ecosystem functioning in order to maintain that production long term.